Thank you for watching City Brief. I'm Tasha Watts, Public Information Officer for the City of Midland. City Brief is a quarterly TV magazine geared to inform citizens about what is happening in local government. In this edition of City Brief, we will highlight a major hot topic for the Midland community, water. But first, let's get you up to date to some of the events and happenings in the area. Beginning on July 29th, the first Tall City Blues Fest will take place at Centennial Plaza in downtown Midland. Coordinating this event is Lisa Grissom with Promising Projects. Well, I'm really glad to be here. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful summer day and uh, we have uh, a lot of stuff planned for Tall City Blues Fest. It'll be right behind me here in Centennial Park Plaza outdoor. Um, of course, it's going to be hot in July, so we also have some indoor activities as well. Um, this is a first annual event, like Tossa, Tossa said, and we have a lineup of 17 different performers, uh, blues and roots musicians, over the course of the weekend. The gates open on Friday at 3 o'clock, uh, so it'll be half a day on Friday, and on Saturday the gates open at 9, so it'll be all day on Saturday, and then on Sunday we'll have a free community blues jam that's open to anybody in the community. Now we also have some educational workshops going on during the festival. That's in partnership with Midland College. So that includes blues guitar instruction, harmonica instruction, songwriting. We even have a harmonica class for kids. And all of the kids actually get a keepsake harmonica. Also for the harmonica 101 class for the adults and teens, the first 20 registrants of that get a complimentary harmonica courtesy of Honer Harmonicas. So all of those proceeds from the workshops there go to kids' college scholarships at Midland College. Uh, we've had some really significant results with scholarship programs. Tall City Blues Fest is really about giving back into the community. Uh, we don't want this to just be an event that you decide on Friday night if you're going to go to. We want this to be an annual event that comes year after year, that's a large scale event, and we designed it specifically for downtown Midland right here in our city. Weekend festival passes, let's talk about cost. They're only $40 for the entire weekend. So that's come and go as you please. Tall City Blues Fest is a family friendly event. So you can bring the whole family out, kids under 12 get in free. Um, the cost is very nominal for the entire weekend. There's all kinds of festivities. There's something for everybody. We have a shrimp and crawfish boil. We have a barbecue cook-off that we're doing. So you can enter into the barbecue cook-off. We'll have food vendors outdoors. We have a Best Buy gaming lounge set up. So there's all kinds of different things that are going on. We have tickets on sale at local ticket outlets. We have six local ticket outlets. So you can catch tickets at Mazda of Midland, Affordable Leather, Eddie's Catfish and all three Jack's convenience store locations. You can also buy tickets online. And here's the real cool thing about buying tickets online. You can just print them out at your computer, bring the print out to the gate, we'll scan your ticket at the gate. So we've made it way super easy, cuts out a few steps. We've got a really fabulous event that we're kicking off this year, July 29th through the 31st, the last weekend in July downtown Midland. You need to mark your calendars for that. It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be the place to be that weekend and we hope that you'll come out. For ticket and additional information visit tallcitybluesfest.com. National Night Out will take place on Tuesday, August 2nd. National Night Out is a community police awareness event held the first Tuesday in August. The Midland Police Department has won 12 awards for their participation. Deputy Chief J.R. Smith has more on what National Night Out is and how citizens can participate. This year the Midland Police Department and the City of Midland will participate in the 28th annual National Night Out. Uh, Midland has been participating in National Night Out for probably about 23 or 24 years. Uh, during the last 12 years we've uh, been recognized by the National Night Out and the uh, Town Watch by uh, receiving an award for our participation. Uh, this last year we were we were tenth out of the 100,000 to 299,000 population range. National Night Out is an opportunity for the police department to interact with the citizens and the citizens to interact with the police department. It's a good time for uh, neighbors to get together so that they can meet new neighbors, meet old neighbors, it gives them an opportunity to talk about problems in the neighborhood, things of interest, um, being able to exchange information on 
just different things that are going on that, uh, that concerns them. It gives the uh, police department an opportunity to sol solicit input from, from uh, citizens on problems that they're having and for the citizens to hear from the police officers what their job entails and what some of the things that they do. On July 16th there will be a party at the Rock Hounds that is sponsored by the Rock Hounds and that's uh, something that's interesting to get involved in. Um, National Night Out is on August the 2nd. If you'd like to register your, your block, um, you can contact the Community Relations uh, Division you, at 685-7582 or you can log on to uh, the City of Midland Police Department website and fill out an application there. On July the 21st will be the uh, block captain's kickoff party and that's always a good time for all the block captains to get together and get material that they need for the for their parties and to uh, get a little bit of a pep talk from the police department. If you plan on participating in this year's event, please register either online at www.midlandtexas.gov or by calling 685-7582. City Brief will be back after a short break. Are you guilty of pouring cooking grease down the drain? Did you know cooking grease constricts the flow of wastewater in our sewer system? And over time, it will cause the waste to back up into homes or overflow onto our streets. When cooking, always properly dispose of grease or drippings. Simply place a few paper towels inside an empty can. Pour the drippings into the can, seal the can in a plastic bag, and throw it in the trash. It's that simple. Help keep our sewers flowing freely and never be guilty of pouring cooking grease down the drain again. We are the city of Midland. We work together. We have integrity. We have passion. We are dependable. We're energetic. And professional. So you see. We have what it takes. What it takes. What it takes. To serve you. The community. And each other. We are the city of Midland. Can you feel the energy? The City of Midland Solid Waste Department would like to remind citizens trash pickup hours have changed due to high temperatures. Trash pickup will begin at 6 a.m. This will assist in keeping the trucks and drivers cool for an additional hour throughout the day, allowing for routes to be completed with fewer vehicle breakdowns and heat-related problems. Please be understanding during the summer months, the change in hours will allow solid waste to better serve the residents of Midland. Extreme drought conditions in Midland continue with no relief in sight, leading the Midland City Council to invoke Stage 2 of the Drought Contingency Plan. During this stage of the plan, fines may be issued for failing to comply. Jim Nichols, the Assistant City Manager, has more information about what Stage 2 is and how it will affect Midland citizens. The Drought Contingency Plan provides guidelines for um, residents and businesses as to how they can use water and in what manners they're allowed to use water so that we can in turn hopefully remain within the limited supply available to us through CRMWD. And so we're looking for the uh, cooperation of our residents to ensure that we're able to meet their needs and also remain within the supply limitations we have. The drought contingency plan includes uh, limitations on when irrigation can occur. Specifically, even addressed properties are allowed to irrigate on Saturday evenings and Tuesday evenings from 6 p.m. through 10 a.m. Uh, the next day. Odd addressed properties uh, irrigate on Sunday evenings and Wednesday evenings from 6 p.m. through 10 a.m. the next morning. Irrigation on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays is strictly prohibited. The plan also includes limitations on when uh, vehicles can be washed. Um, that, those limitations remain within the same time frame as uh, irrigation for, uh, for properties. Pools and jacuzzis can only be filled and refilled during designated irrigation times. The plan also dictates that the operation of ornamental fountains is strictly prohibited other than those that are necessary to sustain aquatic life. Uh, the plan also indicates that Water from hydrants is strictly prohibited other than for firefighting purposes or uh, when necessary to man maintain public health and safety. And finally, the plan prohibits specific non-essential water uses, which are defined as washing down sidewalks and driveways, washing buildings, and things of that nature. Uh, it's important to note that in this phase of the drought plan, the city is going from a voluntary program to a mandatory one. 
what this means is that there will be enforcement action associated with not following the rules and regulations uh, as noted in the plan. Certainly our intention is to work with our citizens and help them maintain and achieve compliance, but in the end if, if folks refuse to adhere to the regulations, uh, citations may be issued by the city if, if deemed necessary. The city acknowledges that there may be times when exceptions to the drought contingency plan are appropriate and necessary. In those cases, the city is willing to consider variance requests as submitted by citizens or businesses who feel that they have specific situations that warrant an exception to the rules. Those variance requests are to be submitted through the Code Enforcement Office and the city will review and consider those requests on an individual basis. For more information about the Drought Contingency Plan, visit the city's website. If you see violations of the plan, please call 685-7410. Water violations are not considered emergencies, so please do not call 911 to report them. The drought has not only caused water shortages, it has also increased the fire danger across West Texas. High temperatures and low humidity increases the risk of grass fires. It only takes one spark to ignite a fire, and on windy days, the fires can become deadly in the blink of an eye. Robert Isbell, the City of Midlands Fire Chief, has more information on what you and your family should do in case of an emergency evacuation due to a wildfire. Hi, I'm Robert Isbell, Fire Chief for the Midland Fire Department. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about fire safety and evacuations. If you were asked to evacuate your home due to uh, an impending wildfire situation, uh, we'd ask that you be prepared for this and, and prepare in advance. Uh, you can put together a small kit with just some important papers, a birth certificate, uh, passport, uh, insurance information, uh, medications, prescriptions, uh, anything that you would have in that nature that you would uh, need to have with you for a short period away from your house. Uh, take those with you. Have those prepared to take with you. When asked to evacuate, you'll be directed to a shelter that will be opened at the time of the evacuation. We'd ask that you not return to the evacu uh, your home uh, for, for any reason, for pets, livestock, any reason. Uh, if you have some concerns, please pass it along to the evacuation officer uh, and it'll get passed on to the fire department or, or public safety agencies to check on. But please, we ask that you not return to those areas. Uh, in preparation for the situation that we're in, the, the, the dramatic drought and dry conditions we're in, we'd ask that all homeowners uh, keep trimmed down all brush and grass within 100 feet of your house. Keep that well manicured and down. Keep debris down to a minimum in those areas to keep uh, a, uh, what is called a clear zone of safety around your house. For more information on preparing for uh, an emergency and evacuation, we'd ask that you visit uh, the website, texasprepares.org, uh, for more information. The fires in West Texas have not only caused devastating loss, they have also compromised the quality of our air. Sal Garcia, the City of Midland's Health and Senior Services Administrator, along with the City's Fire Marshal, Jeff Miner, has more on how this is affecting West Texans. We just ask residents to be aware of their surroundings, watch the news, uh, keep abreast of the weather conditions. If, you, if the weather service is issuing a red flag day, just monitor the radio, monitor the TV if you see a fire break out, and, and, and just be aware what area it's in and where you're at, and be prepared to leave. These fires spread very, very rapidly, and uh, our, our most recent fire, the seed fire, it spread beyond our control very quickly, and it, it kept growing as the fire progressed, and when it hit town, it was at its worst. Uh, we were talking to the weather service, and they said the humidity levels, the temperatures increased, and the fire speed increased, and it was you know, progressing very rapidly beyond anybody's control. Uh, it's not only the smoke, it's, uh, you know, the seed, I'm using the seed fire as an example because it was probably one of the worst ones. It was right in town and uh, the dust, you know, you, you were bombarded with a lot of smoke and, and all that, uh, the flying embers, which is it's just terrible on everybody's allergies. Most people in West Texas have bad allergies anyway, but it just triggered those. But now we have prolonged dust storms and because the fire burnt so hot and so quick, it, it, it took everything, all the vegetation is gone. So now we're experiencing extreme dust storms from that area. We recommend stay indoors if you can during the dust storms. Or of course, if it's a fire and then you're evacuating, you have to evacuate, but just stay out of the smoke. Um, there's stories throughout the state where people are just leaving the community for a while until the air quality. I know Arizona is a big, uh, a big problem with that. People were leaving the area and moving to other places for a while until the smoke and the air quality improved. 
they have asthma or, or bronchitis or any uh, chronic uh, pulmonary disease, it's, it's just best to leave the area and get out of the smoke and the dust. I think this, you know, this time of the year, we, you know, we usually have the winds coming from the south and with the drought, the dust is all over the air. And so, you know, we are going to get some um, allergies and, you know, people that are allergic to the dust. And so the, the best I can tell you uh, is to, uh, if you're walking, uh, try to walk early in the morning when the, before the wind picks up. And if you're going to walk again, try to walk in the evening where it's cooler. And usually the, the winds die down a little bit about 8 o'clock or the sun sets a little bit. So that might help you to have some physical activities uh, and then also hold down the allergies. Uh, since we've been having fires in, in the Permian Basin, you know, you, you want to pay attention to the, uh, the news media concerning um, air quality, um, or smoke in the air in, in your neighborhood or in, in our city, and just try to limit your exposure to smoke if it's in your neighborhood. Uh, you might want to shut the air condition off for a while and just stay inside where it's cool and where you're not having air going in and out of your house until the smoke uh, is out or blows over one or the other. Uh, another issue I wanted to address to our citizens concerning the heat, you know, we've had temperatures up to the hundreds the last couple of weeks or so. So you really need to plan your day. If you, if you um, must go outside to do some shopping or, or uh, other activities, uh, you want to do that. If you can plan that during, during the early mornings before it gets hot, before 12 or late in the evenings. If you're working outside or you, you need to be working on your yard, Try to plan that early in the morning again. Uh, make sure you drink a lot of fluids and make sure you take your breaks. Uh, take some breaks. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you, you won't feel the heat stress coming to you, but you, you need to take uh, precautions on yourself. Take your breaks, wear long sleeves, drink plenty of water, and again, stay cool whenever you can. City Brief will be back after the break to discuss renovations at Midland International Airport. You hear sirens, look up and see lights. What do you do? Move right, keep right. It doesn't matter if an emergency vehicle is behind you or heading towards you in oncoming traffic. Move right, keep right. By moving and keeping to the right, you could be saving a life. If you don't move right, you may be issued a $200 citation. Safe driving saves lives. Move right, keep right. This message was brought to you by the City of Midland Fire and Police Departments. Over 900 auto burglaries occurred last year in Midland. 150 vehicles were stolen last year in Midland. 50 of those occurred from people leaving their keys behind. People who do not secure or hide personal items inside their vehicle are more likely to be a victim of auto theft or burglary. The Midland Police Department would like to remind the citizens of Midland to always lock your vehicles, take your keys, and secure your personal items. If you don't lock it, you may just lose it. You're watching City Brief. We hope you're finding this edition informative and useful. Have you recently traveled by air, or do you plan to travel by air anytime soon? If so, you can expect some small renovations at the Midland International Airport. Justine Ruff, Assistant Director of Airports, has more on what travelers may expect during their visit to the airport. Um, we've had some major changes this year. Uh, we've replaced all of the carpet on the lower level with Port Terrazzo and we have um, replaced all the carpet on the upper level in the, the main thoroughfare with Terrazzo and then we've replaced all the carpet at the gates also. That's the main thing you notice when you walk in. We've done some painting, um, we replaced the baggage carousels downstairs. Another big thing that passengers will notice is that we've always had a problem with people backing up at the checkpoint. So now you can um, come up in the escalator and there's a queuing area that has opened up where Big Two used to have their news studio, and so you can um, wait in line in there, and we don't have to turn the escalators off. And we've also gone free with our Wi-Fi, so while you're waiting for your flight, you can always um, get online and do what you need to do. We always try and make it easy for our travelers to uh, come through the airport, so we hope that any passengers coming in have a great visit, and everything we've done is designed to make it easier. Remember, if you're planning to travel by air, visit the Transportation Security Administration website for travel tips and safety. The TSA Travel Assistant feature will give you the guidelines on what you should wear and how to make your screening experience hassle-free. 
For those of you traveling by motor vehicles this summer, remember to stay safe and buckle up. Sergeant Craig Matthews will give us seat belt and car seat safety tips in this edition of Safe Driving Saves Lives. Hi, I'm Sergeant Craig Matthews with the Midland Police Department and I want to talk to you about car seat safety, seat belts, and um, child restraints in general. Uh, first of all, you should know that in uh, reference to children that are in vehicles, if they're younger than eight years of age, uh, unless they're four foot nine, they're required to be in a child safety seat device that fits them. Now what that means is you have to look at the box or the manufacturer's instructions for the car seat itself and read it and follow those instructions. You know, if it says that the child must be between 20 and 50 pounds or 20 and 40 pounds, then that's where your child should be to properly fit that seat belt restraint device. Now if, uh, say for example, your child isn't within the range of the manufacturer's instructions, then that would be the same as not wearing a child safety seat at all or being in a seat belt system as properly designed by state law. You, it's real important that you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Another really important feature is that you are required to, found, to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the vehicle that you're driving when installing a car safety seat. Uh, sports cars have really deep buckets in the back and sometimes that can really affect how the child safety seat fits in there properly. For example, a new, brand new infant seat, if you don't have it at the correct angle, the child's head will lean forward and could cut off an airway, creating a hazardous situation, uh, of course, for the life of the child. So it's real important that you read your instructions when you're dealing with child safety seats and different manufacturers of motor vehicles. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always call me here at the police department. I'm a child safety seat technician. I can help you properly install and show you how to, to work your own child safety seat yourself. Also, if uh, you're in a motor vehicle, it doesn't matter where you're at in a motor vehicle, you're required to be in a seat belt system. So if you're in the back seat of a pickup truck, you're required day or night to wear the seat belt um, if you're an adult or if you're a child. If you're a child, make sure that you're over four foot nine so that you properly fit uh, in that seat belt system um, manufacturers are designing the seat belts so that if you're four foot nine that it will fit properly across the shoulder bone and the hip bones here. Um, that's what actually keeps you safe in the motor vehicle. If you see the seat belt and it rides on the neck area right here, it could cause damage instead of help save your life or even the collarbone uh, because it's not a major bone structure that's going to actually help keep you in place uh, safely. So it needs to go across the shoulder and the hip bones for you to fit properly in that seat belt system. As a driver, you're responsible for the occupants of your vehicle if they're underage. Um, so if you have a occupant in your motor vehicle and they're underage and they're not properly seat belted or in a child restraint device, the driver, whether you're the parent or not of that individual in the vehicle, you're responsible to the point that if you're stopped by law enforcement, you will be issued a citation. Um, the citation uh, varies as to how much it would cost you in order to uh, take care of the citation, but they can be anywhere from $250 or, or around that area, depending upon the court, of course, that you're dealing with, whether it's a uh, Justice of the Peace Court or a Municipal Court. Another really big thing is we're really busy in today's um, frame of mind and business and everything's going on and it's pretty easy to be on your way to daycare and forget. Yes, forget that you've got a child in the vehicle. Um, I've got some ideas to try to help remind parents um, uh, about the child that's in the vehicle. I set an alarm on your phone. Did you drop off your child uh, or the person that you're responsible for at daycare? You know, and set the alarm for right after you're supposed to be at work. And that could be a really good, easy reminder. We've a lot of people have smartphones now, and that makes it easier to remember that there's somebody that you're responsible for. 
we've already had more than 10 deaths in the United States for child or children being left in a motor vehicle. With the temperatures that we've got, uh, especially around the middle of Odessa area, this is really important because it can get hot very, very fast and it wouldn't take very long uh, for it to critically injure that child being left in that hot motor vehicle. Temperatures can reach 140, 150 degrees inside that car really quickly. So it's real important to just, you know, at this day and age, remind yourself about those loved ones that are important. They might be asleep on the way to work or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, we've even had one where the child was looking for the parent. The parent was asleep in the house, and this one I think was in Houston. And the child went out and got in the car and was found hours and hours later, of course, deceased. This is something we don't want to happen in our community. Remember those loved ones, those little kids. They're really important. Anyone needing assistance with their car seat installations may set up an appointment with the Midland Police Department by calling 685-7108. It's about time to wrap up this edition of City Brief, but before we go, Ben Teleska, the City of Midland's Recreation Superintendent, would like to give you a quick tour of the BMX Park located inside Reyes Mashburn and Nelms Park. The BMX track was started about two years ago and it was a project between uh, some of the staff with the city and some uh, private and a private group and uh, it has evolved into a competitive racing venue that uh, draws folks from all over the state and uh, from around the country to uh, stop by and uh, visit us on a regular basis. On Tuesdays and Thursday evenings after 6 o'clock you can come out and enjoy uh, some practice time out here at the track and get some experience with some of the uh, seasoned riders and some of the adults that can help coach you to uh, improve on the skills and learn a little bit more about the sports. On a regular basis, uh, they host races on Saturday evenings at approximately 5.45 is uh, the registration time with uh, uh, races starting soon thereafter. On a regular basis, also the uh, dirt jumps are available outside of the track area for those of you that are into the BMX freestyle stuff and those things are available all the time. Uh, you don't have to wait till our practice times to be able to access those right outside of our gates. We are located at uh, Reyes, Mashburn, and Nelms Park. Uh, you can uh, reach us at the intersection of Cuthbert and Fairgrounds Road, right behind Animal Services. Uh, and you'll have to drive to the back side of the park and you'll see the uh, dirt jumps and the t big turns and the gazebos back there. And uh, again, our hours of operations are Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturday evenings after six o'clock is when you'll find the groups, the West Texas BMX group, out here helping folks out. If you don't have equipment, that's not a problem. We do have loaner equipment. We provide helmets, we provide bikes, we have both mini bikes, we have regular 20 inch bikes as well as cruisers uh, available uh, to be loaned to the public. Uh, we do ask the folks to exercise caution and follow the uh, recommended uh, warning signs that we have posted throughout the track to ensure everybody's safety. The City of Midland encourages all citizens to take advantage of the city's parks and facilities. For an entire list of city parks, log on to the city's website and click Parks and Recreation under the Residence link. Thank you for watching City Brief. The City of Midland is diligently working to better communicate between citizens, city staff, and city council. It is our hope to do so with this video program. Log on to the city's website, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube page for more information about city events, happenings, and services. I'm Tossa Watts, and thanks again for watching.